live from Atlanta, Georgia, it's theCUBE, covering Ansible Fest 2019. Brought to you by Red Hat. Okay, welcome back everyone. It's CUBE's live coverage here in Atlanta, Georgia for Ansible Fest 2019. I'm John Furrier with Stu Minnie, my co-host. Our next guest is Massimo Ferrari, product manager with Ansible Security. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank Thanks you for coming much. on. Thank you for having me. Um, so security, obviously, big part of the conversation in automation. Absolutely. Making things more efficient, you know, secure, making security driving a lot of automation, obviously job performance, among other things. Um, Red Hat's done a lot of automation in other areas outside of just configuration, network automation, now security, looking kind of like the same thing, but security is certainly different and more critical. It is, it's more it's time sensitive. Tell us through the security system. automation angle, what's going on? Well, basically, there are, there are several things going on, right? I believe the main thing is that um, IT organizations are changing. Well, honestly, IT organizations have been changing for the last about five years, 10 years, and as a consequence, the infrastructures to be protected are changing as well. And there are a couple of challenges that are kind of common to other areas of IT. As you said, automation is, is all over the place, so clearly there are some challenges that are common to IT operations or network operations, something that is peculiar for the security space. What we are seeing basically is that um, if you think about, there's a, there's a major problem of scale, right? If you think about the adoption of technologies like containers or private and public cloud, if you are a large organization, you are, you are introducing those technologies side by side with, uh, for example, your legacy applications on bare metal or your fantastic virtual machines. But what they do actually is introducing a, um, a problem of size, a problem of scale, and a problem of complexity connected to that. A and a, a problem of distribution, which is just unmanageable uh, without automation. And the other problem, which is complexity that I mentioned before, is not, I wasn't specifically referring to the complexity of the infrastructure per se. Um, if, we, if we think about like uh, adopting best practices or practices like microservices or adopting functions as a service, we can easily imagine how a uh, an old school three tiers application can be re-engineered to, be, to become something like with made of 10, 100 components. And those are micro components very focused on single things. But from a yeah. security perspective, those are ingress points. Mm -hmm. And what automation did, what automation proved to be able to do is to manage complexity for other areas. So you can be successful in IT operations, in network, and clearly you can be successful in security. But what is unique to security is that uh, professionals are facing a problem of speed, uh, which means different things. But uh, to give you an example, what we are seeing is that more and more cyber attacks are using automation and artificial intelligence. And the result of that is that the velocity and the impact of those attacks is so big that you can cope with human operators. So we are in a classic situation of fighting fire with fire, so this is a great example. We had the service guys on earlier talking about the automation platform, and one comment was, you don't want to boil the ocean over, focus on some things you can break down and show some wins. Security um, professionals have that same problem. They want to throw automation and AI at the problem. It's going to solve everything. Of course. And so it's certainly very valuable. You know, managing configurations, open ports, S3 buckets, there's a variety of things that, entry points for hackers and adversaries to come in, take down networks. What's the best practice? How do you see customers applying automation? What's the playbook, if you will? What's the formula for a customer to look at security? Say, okay, how do I direct Ansible at my security uh, problems or opportunities well, to manage that? When you discuss security automation with customers, it really depends on the kind of audience that you have. As you know, you know security organizations tend to be fairly structured, right? And depending on the person you are talking to, they may have a slightly different uh, meaning for security automation is a broader practice in general. Uh, what we are trying to do with Ansible Security Automation is we are targeting a very specific problem. There is a well-known issue in the security world which is the lack of integration. What we know is that if you are any large organization, you buy tens, hundreds sometimes of security solutions. And those are great, they protect whatever they have to protect, but there is little to no integration between them. And the result of that is that security teams have an incredible amount of manual work to do just to uh, correlate data, 
coming from different dashboards or to perform an investigation across different perimeters or at some point they have to remedy something that is going on and they have to apply this remediation across groups of devices that are sparse. And what we are trying to do with Ansible Security Automation is to propose Ansible as an integration layer, as a glue between all those different technologies. To, uh, on one hand, is a matter of, you know, become more efficient, streamline the process. On the other hand, is an idea of having truly a way to plan, use automation as your action plan. Because security is, as we say, is, is uh, time critical, mm -hmm. and so automation becomes, in this context, become even more important. Massimo, uh, with the, the launch of the Ansible Automation platform, we see a real enhancement of how the ecosystem's participating here. Uh, where does security fit into the collections uh, that, that are coming from uh, the partner ecosystem of Ansible? Well, in one, in one way, we have been building over the shoulders of our friends and network automation. They did an amazing job over four years. They did, they did two major things. The first one is that they expanded for the first time the footprint of Ansible outside the traditional IT operation space. That was amazing. And uh, uh, we did kind of the same thing, and we started working with some vendors that were already working with us for slightly different use cases, and we helped them to identify the right use cases for security and expand even more uh, what they were capable of doing through Ansible. And what we are doing now is basically working with customers. We have, you know, a uh, lighthouse customer, we call them, that guide us to understand which is the next step that we are supposed to perform, and we are gathering together a security community uh, around Ansible. Because surprisingly, we all know that the security community has always been there, always been super vocal, but open sourcing security is a fairly new thing. Right, and so we have this ability. The important thing is that we all know that Red Hat is not a security vendor, right? We don't want to be a security vendor. That's not the ambition that we have. We are automation experts in the case of Ansible, and we are open source experts across the board. So what we are doing with them, we are helping them to get there, to cooperate in the open source world. And for security, uh, it proved to be very interesting the adoption of collection because in some way allows them to deliver the content that they want to deliver in a very, um, I would say, focused way. And since security relies on, again, is a matter of time to market or time to solve the problem, through collection they have more independence, they are capable to deliver whatever they want to deliver when they want to deliver according to the standards. You know, one of the things you mentioned, glue layer, integration layer, and open source your expertise in, in automation. It's interesting, and I want to get your, your reaction to this, because we did a survey of CISOs on our community um, prior to the Amazon Web Services Reinforced Conference this past summer was their first inaugural cloud security. So yeah, cloud security is a big part of it, but with on-premise and hybrid and multi-cloud here on the, uh, being discussed, this notion of what cloud and role of enterprises is interesting to the CISOs, Chief Information Security Officer. And the trend on the survey was is that CISOs are rehiring internal development teams to build stacks on site in their own organizations. Investing in their stack. And they're picking a cloud and then a secondary cloud. So as that development team picks up, that seems to be a trend. One, do you agree with that? And if people want to have their own developers in-house for security purposes, how does Ansible fit into that glue layer? Because if it's configuring all the gear and all the pipes and plumbing, it makes sense to kind of think about that. So this might be a trend that's helping you? So uh, the trend, there is a general trend in the corporate enterprise world that more technical people are um, coming into traditionally, in areas that are traditionally um, under the purview of other, of other uh, people or, or, or domains, right? So we saw more technical people coming into business lines. We are seeing more developers coming into security. That's, that's certainly a trend. It's a matter of, you know, it's again, it's a matter of managing scale and complexity. You need yeah. to have technical people there. So in one hand, that helps us to create a more efficient and more pervasive community around security. You have developers there, which means that you need to, to serve that corner case that you are not targeted at the moment. You have talented people that can cooperate with us and build those kind of And things. use the open source software. Exactly, well that's the, entire, that's the entire purpose, right? You want to drive people to contribute, they get the value back, we get the value back, they get the value back, that's the entire purpose. So you do the see thing. the trend of more developers being hired by enterprises in-house. It certainly is, and uh, it's been going on for about like probably 
three to five years I've seen that. In other areas, many, mainly in the business area because they want to gain that agility and want to be um, self-contained in some way. Business want to be self-contained and security in some sense is going in the same direction. That fits clearly one um, angle of Ansible, so you have more contribution in the community. On the other end, what we are trying to make sure is that uh, yeah. we support the traditional security teams. Traditional yeah. security teams are not super development oriented, <laughs> right? So they want to consume the content. Well, DevOps is always, a, uh, you know, infrastructure as code implies that the infrastructure has been coded. And, you know, if you look at all of the security breaches that have been big, a lot of them have been basic stuff, an S exposed S3 bucket. Is that Amazon's fault or is that the operator's fault? Or patches that aren't deployed? You guys are winning in with Ansible in these areas. This seems to be a nice spot for you guys to come in. I mean, can you elaborate on those points? Um, and, and, and is that true and you guys winning in those areas? Because, I mean, I could see automation just solving a lot of those problems. Well, there is, I, I will say something not super popular, but as a security community, we always been horrible at the basics, right? We've been, we always, like any other technical people, we are chasing the latest and greatest, the fun stuff. The basics, we are always been bad at that. Automation is a fairly new thing in security, and what we all know that automation does is providing you consistency and reduce human error. Most of this stuff is because somebody forgot to configure something. Some, someone forgot to uh, rotate a secret or something They didn't like bring that. their playbook to the game. So <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to fly the parallelism here, but the point is that the same benefits that There's you get There's just no excuse. If you have automation, you can basically load that patch or not configure that, or configure that port properly because a playbook exists. This only helps. Absolutely, but those are the basic values of automation. You communicate in a slightly different way to security because they use a different language and for them automation is still a new thing. But what you heard during the keynote, so the entire purpose of the platform is to help different areas in the IT organization to cooperate to each other. As we know, security is not a problem of IT security anymore. It's a broader problem and needs to, you know, have a common tool to be solved. Yeah, uh, in in the, the demo in the keynote this morning, I thought they did a good job showing how the various f stakeholders in the organization can all collaborate and work together. I um, want you to explain how security fits into that discussion. Also, uh, th they added, added like the hardening piece in there, but uh, I would have, you know, I would expect for many companies that, you know, I want to flag when I'm creating this image that it's going to say, hey, have you put the right security uh, policies on top of it? Not something that they just, oh, I, it's one of the steps that I do, how, how do we make sure that everybody follows those uh, corporate edicts that we have? Well, it's, a, it's mainly a matter, I want to use the, the play the usual card of you know, cultural change, but the fact is that in security especially, we are, we are looking at two major shifts. And one of these shifts is that pretty much everyone, uh, I would say private organization and government, kind of acknowledge that security, cyber security is not an IT problem anymore, it's a business problem, right? Being a business problem, that means that the stakeholders involved are in all different parts of the organization, and that requires a different level of collaboration. Collaboration starts with, you know, uh, training, and uh, you know, enablement of people to understand where the problems are and understand that they are part of the same process. We used to have security as a highly specialized function of IT. Mm -hmm. Right now, what happens is that if you, have, if you think about uh, a data breach, a data breach could be uh, caused by an IT problem, but most of the impact is on the business, right? So right now, a lot of uh, security processes are shifting to give responsibility to the business owners. And if the government is involved, I, I live in London and in Europe for another month, I guess, we, uh, we have this fantastic thing that you know, it's called GDPR. GDPR forces you to have uh, um, what is called a data breach notification process, which means that now if you're investigating a cyber threat, you want to have legal there to make sure that everything is fine. And if this data breach is, uh, could become a media thing, you want to have PR there because you want to have a plan to mitigate you know, whatever kind of impact you may have on your corporate image. You may also want to have, uh, to have their, I don't know, um, customer care, just to handle the calls of the customer, <laughs> worry for the data. So the point is that uh, this is becoming a process that needs to involve people. People need to be aware that they are part of this process. And on what we can do as an automation provider, we are trying to enable through the platform 
in the IT organization to cooperate with each other. You know, having workflows, having the ability to contribute to the same process allows you to be responsible, responsible for, your, for your piece. Uh, Massimo, uh, the new security track here at the show this year. Uh, for, for those that didn't get to come or maybe that didn't get to see all of it, some of the highlights you want to share uh, with the audience. So this year, um, the general message this year is that it's the first time that we have this fantastic security track. And this is not a security conference, it's never going to be a security conference. So what we are trying to do is to enable security teams to talk with the automation expert to introduce automation in that space. So the general message that we have this year is, uh, what the desire is to create a bridge between the Ansible practitioners, the Ansible heroes, whatever you want to call them, um, to understand what the problem is, what the problem could be, and have a sort of a common language they can use to communicate. So the message that we had this year was, uh, is go back home and sit down at the same table with your security folks and uh, make sure that they are aware that this is the new possibility and you can help them that you now have a common tool together. We have a, a couple of very interesting tracks. We have partners, a lot of partners are contributing to the security space, we, we mentioned that before, and most of them have tracks here, and they are uh, showing what they built with us, what are the possibilities of those tools. Uh, we have a couple of customer stories that are extremely interesting. I just came out from a session uh, presenting one of our customer stories. And uh, uh, in general, we are trying to show also how you can integrate security in all the broader processes, like you know the mythical DevSecOps process. What's been the feedback from customers specifically around the, the talk and the security conversations here at Ansible Fest? It, it wasn't unexpected, but it's going particularly well. We had very good, uh, uh, we have very good feedbacks. And we had, we kind of spoke. What are they saying? Well, they're saying, some, okay, the best quote that I can give you, the customer told me, oh, this year I learned something new. I learned that we can do something in this space we never thought about which is a good feedback to have in a, uh, at a conference. And a lot of people are attending this session. We have, we have quite a lot of security professionals. That, that was kind of unexpected. So um, the, 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 all the sessions are pretty full, but we, are, uh, we also are seeing people that are just, they're just curious. They're coming in and they are staying. They are paying attention. So there is the real opportunity. They see the same opportunity that we see. And hopefully that will bring the message home. Massimo, thank you for coming on theCUBE, sharing your insights. Certainly security is a main driver for automation, one of the key four bullet points that we outline in our opening. Thanks for coming on thank and you sharing your insights. Me. This is theCUBE coverage here at Ansible Fest 2019, where Red Hat's announced their Ansible automation platform. I'm John Forrest, Stu Miniman. Stay with us for more after this short break. <laughs>